Key provisions of the Kyoto Protocol, in particular the limits on greenhouse gas emissions from Annex 1 states, are set to expire in 2012. Negotiations on post-Kyoto Treaty are in progress. Many analysts believe that such negotiations benefit from comparisons between present Kyoto Protocol and the Law of the Sea Convention or the Montreal Protocol. The following contrasts the history, scope, complexity, national self-interest, fairness, and enforcement of these treaties. The Law of the Sea, Montreal, and Kyoto treaties follow different histories. The Law of the Sea Convention addressed long-standing problems for which an extensive body of customary international law already existed, but still negotiators labored for more than two decades on the Law of the Sea Convention before it entered into force. By contrast, stratospheric ozone depletion and global climate change are issues of recent origin. Scientific evidence about the role of chlorofluorocarbons in ozone depletion was first obtained in the 1970s. Negotiations about ozone depletion began among 28 states in 1985, and the Montreal Protocol entered into force in 1989. Scientists reached a consensus about global climate change and the role of human activities in the 1980s. Many sovereign states convened in 1997 to negotiate the Kyoto Protocol, and it entered into force in 2005. The scope and complexity of the three treaties differ. The Law of the Sea Convention delineated territorial waters and extraction of natural resources from the seas and seabed. Matters broad in scope, but conceptually straightforward. The Montreal Protocol focused on human production consumption of the few man-made substances that deplete ozone. Ozone depletion is associated with higher incidence of human skin cancer, a harm that is both salient and easily envisioned. The Kyoto Protocol addressed the interactions between greenhouse gases and Earth's climate, a much more difficult task because many natural and human activities generate greenhouse gases, and greenhouse gases are only one of many factors responsible for changes in climate. Sovereign states must serve the interests of their leaders and citizens. Because sovereign states have no obligation to join a treaty, the benefits of doing so must outweigh those of not joining. The Law of the Sea Convention appealed to the self-interest of most sovereign states because it clarified territorial claims to natural resources and rights of passage, but the protection of marine life in international waters has proved much more difficult. The Montreal Protocol was consistent with the interests of several states, particularly the United States. By 1977, American consumers had become so worried about the ozone hole that they had cut the U.S. market for ozone-depleting substances in spray cans by two-thirds, even without governmental regulation. The following year, the United States legislation banned chlorofluorocarbons as propellants for non-essential uses. By 1987, the year in which the Montreal Protocol was drafted, the United States' production of ozone-depleting substances had plummeted from half of the world's total to a quarter. 